ました、えー、それではあの後半の方にお伝えしていただきたいと思います、えー、後半は、えー、ロバート・ハン・ヒューメンさんと、えー、ロバース・コリンズさんのこちらです、えー、まずロバート・ハン・ヒューメンさんよろしくお願いします So, my name is Robert van Heumen, and I will tell you a bit about recent Stein projects.、Um, most of them are like, within the last two years.、Uh, just to give you an idea of what we do currently, as you've heard from Taku, what has been happening in the past. Um, on the project side,、uh, I will give some examples、uh, with some images、um, because there has been already a lot of talking.、Um, a little bit of an overview of what I'm going to talk about. So, a little introduction、um, the project procedures, how Stein deals with projects,、uh, how you can apply.、Um, then, I will show quite a lot of examples. And I will tell a bit about workshops and other presentations that Stein also does because、uh, we haven't really touched on that subject yet. Okay, a little introduction. My name is Robert van Heijnen.、Um, I'm a musician and a composer next to my job at Stein, which is the managing director, which basically is、uh, managing the communication between hardware, software, and projects that happen at Stein.、Um, Although Stein is pretty small, it's sometimes difficult to make sure that, that the expectations of project guests are met and we know what they are after.、Um, so, my job is to keep track of that and make sure that they talk to the right people at the right moment. Next to that, I'm also organizing、uh, workshops that happen at Stein, which I will talk about later.、Um, so, the different types of projects. Um, there's basically four types. Of course, there's all kinds of projects which are fall between or are a combination of two or three.、Um, but basically, there is first orientation workshops, which、uh, the name is a little confusing. It's not really a workshop where you、uh, apply for, in a sense, but it's,、um, it's something like an introduction to Stein.、Um, quite a lot of project applications that come in um, are. Um, Not really、uh, work out yet. People are searching into a certain direction but are not really sure how Stein can be involved. So, an orientation workshop is something that can help them go into Stein, seeing what's happening, seeing how they could do something with their work at Stein.、Um, it's basically a week where we have four or five people、uh, staying at the Stein guest house,、um, each of them having a workspace. Um, studio or atelier,、um, and we'll have、uh, five or six sessions where people like Frank and Takuro、um, and myself、uh, explain the sign tools.、Um, as were mentioned, these are junction mainly for the software side,、um, sensor and, and sensor interfaces.、Um, we try to give them a full, full view of what sign can offer.、Um, And also try to place that within their work so they can ask questions, they can really direct also which way we go with this orientation workshop. So, if people are more interested in a certain section of the Stein tools, we can yeah, just help them in that direction a bit more.、Um, other projects are totally the opposite side, I would say. It's a studio only where people just need a studio, a place to work for a certain period of time. Um, usually, that's local people.、Uh, we try to fill up the studios as much as possible so there's no, there's no empty studios and it would be a shame,、uh, a waste of money, a waste of opportunities.、Um, studio only usually has not really a lot of involvement in Stein with Stein staff.、Uh, sometimes there is, though, so it's, it's really very flexible.、Um, the third option is a RD residency, as I Them. That's actually the biggest group, I would say, also the most, the most broad in a sense. 
Um, that's usually people who know already what they want, what kind of support they're looking for at site, um, and they want to work it out. They want to build an, build an instrument, they want to work on some kind of composition with some help from, from Frank, for example. Um, they really have a fixed idea, and that's what they want to work on. Um, usually this R&D residency is a kind of like a logical follow-up on the orientation workshop. That's what we buy us and see. Uh, the orientation workshop being like uh, a get to know each other, so we we can meet the persons and the participants, and the participants can meet time, so to say. And sometimes if there's a match or there's really like opportunities to start working more specifically on a project, uh, we can schedule another period where people come back for yeah more specific work. Um, obviously, Simon is very much involved there in, in building instruments with the hardware technicians, uh, Jorgen and Al from Takuro, uh, with help and software from Frank. Uh, the last group of project is advice. It's also pretty broad. Um, it's usually people who, um, who, who happen to come by in Amsterdam. They want to see the building. They want to meet some people to see what time can mean for them. Um, or it's people that have a pretty specific question, which is uh, there's not, not really a necessity to uh, organize a project where they come for a week. They just want to meet a couple of people to get some get some uh, uh, technical information or some artistic information, um, and that's in the fourth kind of group. Um, I think it's also important to know that. Uh, most people that work at Stein are really practicing musicians or composers themselves. So we're really very interested also in being involved on an artistic level. So it's not only a place where you find technical solutions, but hopefully also where you get ideas on the artistic level or help on the artistic level. Um, and I think also because everybody at Stein is a practicing musician, we can really feel the need for like, reliable instruments. Um, I think there's a practical um, practical part of something, a practical, um, yeah, kind of a practical place where you can really do work. Um, usually, actually, yeah, what I want to say, uh, the, the residents we have are usually pretty short, from one to three weeks. Um, and, but then usually people come back in regular intervals. So first week can be an orientation workshop, a second visit a couple of months later can be initial work on an instrument that people take home, uh, perform with, work with, and then they come back a couple of months later to fine tune the instrument before they really start to play a lot with it. Um, and this can go on for a long time. Obviously some people have been around this time for yeah, 20, 25 years developing their instruments in steps. Um, yeah, what Stein provides. Uh, we're very lucky to have a guest house which has five rooms for artists. Um, so if we invite somebody, we also offer this lodging space if necessary. Um, of course, there's studio space, which is uh, accessible full time. So if you come to Stein for two weeks, you get a, a studio space or sometimes an atelier, which is a, a not so soundproof space, but it can be used for some other kinds of projects. Um, and you're you're able to go in there day and night, which happens. People sometimes sleep there. So um, I think it's also very good. I've visited other visited other studios and. Very often it's more common that you reserve slots of time, so you have to take out your stuff, which is for a lot of time projects not very practical because they, well, usually you have like a, a room full of stuff and equipment and hardware that you don't want to take out every time, like every day. So, um, yeah, that's all we try to support. Then there's, um, uh, yeah, like I said, the support on hardware and software, helping people with practical soldering and designing. Um, uh, uh, circuits, um, helping with software, helping with Lisa or junction setups. Um, also, we try, of course, we're not 
we don't really want to limit ourselves to this time tools only. Um, Kakuro is very much working with the Maximus P, so if we can help people in that part, we also will do that. I'm working with SuperCollider, so if that's something that people need information on, then we can support that to a certain degree. Um, actually, Jorgen Blinkman, the hardware uh, engineer, has a full analog studio in the basement of Stein. So uh, quite a lot of time, people are very interested in that, and he's very happy to give tours and uh, yeah educate people in that way because sometimes people are actually very young so they don't they have no clue what it's about. So um, yeah so it's a nice mixture of all kinds of activities and all kinds of support. Um, all, all three that, that I mentioned studio space, lodging and support is done without costs. Like that's actually where Stein gets the funding from the government for. Uh, what we do not cover, usually for projects, is travel expenses and living expenses, but that can usually be worked out with like, some funding on the visiting country side or a kind of. Um, yes, two pictures. I think you've seen some already. Um, Studio One. As you can also see, I mean, we, we don't really have fixed setup in studios where you can just come in with your Pro Tools disk and start recording a Pro Tools session. Um, we have all kinds of equipment around, but every project is, is very unique, so we just try to help people with what they need, and that usually means you know, moving around stuff, which usually is also stored in studios. Um, so this is one of the studios, and then here we have Studio 2, both of the nice 80 design, I think. So now I'm going to show some examples. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. just wanted to show them to you, so um, if you have questions later on a specific one that I didn't talk about, just feel free to come by and, and ask. Um, there is a, an instrumental part, and of course, there's also this kind of categories are very mixed. Uh, instrumental is not only instrumental, sometimes also an installation or that kind of mixtures. Um, we have Hans Maliguiti, a cello player, who has uh, been working on a bow uh, with, with sensors attached, especially an ultrasound sensor um, that connects to Max MSP. Then there's uh, Leticia Tsunami, uh, Taku mentioned already. Um, she is one of the persons who has been working a long time at time developing this ladies glove with um, the bending sensors in the fingers. This is an instrument that has also had different stages. Uh, then of course Michelle with the hands, but you've seen the movie already that. Um, this is a quite recent one. Juan Felipe Boer, he's, he's a composer who lives in Amsterdam. Um, he writes quite a lot for percussion and he wanted to electrify the ratchet, which is this rotating percussion instrument, which is very noisy. Um, and actually, for, uh, just for researching, he just attached a Wii controller on top of it. And by rotating, he can actually track the, the rotation of the, of the, of the Wii. So, it's a small video. Information to work on his own. 
there's a uh, Sean Greeny. He's actually still has to come to sign. He um, built this instrument that uh, he wants to uh, work on a little bit further. This I would say is more studio only because he knows how to program his computer. He knows how to work with the hardware. So he basically needs a space and actually also an environment where he can get also inspired by other people who give him feedback on this uh, work. Try to be a little loud. So. Mm. joystick that was hacked, it's a wireless joystick 
where you see uh, on, the, on the right you see the receiver that connects with the USB to the computer, and on the left bottom side you see the, what's left of the joystick with the batteries um, that communicates wirelessly with the receiver. Uh, on the bow uh, there is a, an accelerometer and a pressure sensor, and on the other side there's a couple of buttons. So it's basically a really pretty simple idea. But then with the movement of the bow, with the rotation and the, like the bigger movements, she can control electronic sound and sampling herself, basically, I think. Um, there was a first step uh, she's working with right now, and yeah, we have to check back later with her to see how it's going, if it's working like it, like it we think it should work. So, um, and this again is the work of uh, Jorgen Blinkman, the hardware designer, who took apart this joystick and made it so in the solo package. Um, yeah, when I mentioned Christina Anderson, um, she's a Danish artist. I started working with Stein a couple of years ago, uh, uh, working on wear wearable electronics. So electronics that you can wear, and should also be wireless, or it would be nice. Um, she created a couple of different uh, pieces of clothing with electronics embedded, and this is only one. Uh, this is a dress with, in, at the bottom you will see this, this black kind of blob, which is an accelerometer, and at the top you will see again one of those wireless hacked joysticks that sent the data wirelessly. And it's meant for children where they dress up and when they move around they send safely send data to the computer that makes some kind of sound. And it's very popular and it fits really in to this time, like exhibition uh, 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 tradition, I would say. So let's go to uh, the next group, which is installations. Although, of course, the Christina Anderson that I just showed can also be called installation. Or, yeah. Uh, one interesting artist who is at the moment uh, working with Stein is Tao Sandorek. Um, he does different things. He's also a musician. Uh, he, he worked on um, creating a tabletop controller, or something like this, but then more extended and like tried out different sensors. And uh, but he's also he also makes installations. And this is a recent installation where he applied for support and we actually granted him support like two weeks ago, so it still has to happen. Um, but um, it's about an installation that has been running already. Um, and the idea is you have a tree. Well, it first starts with a, with a bird, a very specific bird uh, that makes a specific sound. And only at certain times of the day when the sun is shining. Um, so he made an installation where you have these tape recorders, these portable tape recorders in the tree, a lot of them, with uh, what do you call that? Sun, uh, sun, like, sun collectors? Solar cells. Solar cells, thank you. Uh, solar cells, so they were actually, only if they would get sunlight, they would work, and they would play like the sound of the bird, or, and if they would get less uh, energy, it would play down, it would play slower, um, but I think it was kind of faking because it didn't really work like that, so that's why he actually came to Stein to make a digital version of it. Uh, to put it on, on smaller chips that um, need less power to run in the, in the right way. So I have a small right, video from his application. Starting probably like two months or so. 
Then there's um, Cody Vogel. He's a, a drummer uh, who makes also installations. Uh, he's from the US. He finishes his time for an orientation workshop. Um, again, meeting other people and trying to find a way, like, how can I, how can I work with time? Do I want to work with time, anyways? Like, that kind of. Um, and just to show a bit of what he's up to, he also does this kind of. Sometimes makes the like funding people wonder why we 
where the money goes. So we try to support a fair amount of Dutch artists also. But I mean, we try to mix. Um, yeah, there's, an, there's a more list here which you see. Kathy Matthews, I should mention. Uh, she's a uh, Lisa user from the first hour also, somebody who promotes time and, and Lisa quite a lot. Um, she also uses Lisa as a as a laptop musician. Um, there's some other people, John Werner, who was mentioned. Um, he was the artistic was artistic director two years ago. Um, and we're actually still in the process of helping him with uh, an instrument that was kind of scheduled and slowly being built right now. Um, it's always difficult for timing because he's somebody who's touring quite a lot, so um, and we really try to encourage people when we build something with them to be as time also regularly to be able to, you know, to get feedback and to work together. Um, there's the last section, author. Um, one interesting one is Phil Stearns. Uh, he was part of the Cal Arts uh, in California uh, uh, school that actually visited Stein last year with a group of people. Um, that also what happens, that's also something that happens quite a lot where uh, we have connections with schools that send us uh, four or five people as a sort of orientation workshop. Um, because that, that's through schools, it's usually uh, not such a problem to get funding for uh, travel. And we can help them with lodging and um, and then the other support studios and such. So uh, he's actually a PhD student, um, and he works on this analog artificial neural network, um, which he also made a, a blog entry. He you see him with this neural network. It was actually um, so it's a neural network made of analog neurons. So there's no digital component. Um, and actually here is a little bit better view of, of the object. Uh, he is talking about it as a she. Um, on, on the one side there is uh, light sensors, on the other side there are speakers, and I think there's also a microphone somewhere. So all this input data is used um, to trigger reaction in these neurons that, that trigger reactions to each other given through, and then in speakers there's an output. And this is the way it sounds. It's actually in a group of people, so it's a, it's a bit noisy around it, but it's a... <laughs> So people were definitely trying to make it respond to what they were saying. Uh, there's a couple of more, but um, I need to go on for time for now. But I may mean, also get yeah, Tarek Atui is mentioned. He's the artistic director this year. Um, he's going to be involved a lot. Uh, well, he's going to work on this uh, workshop uh, idea with uh, uh, children refugee camps, which is a thing we also would like to support. So, yes, how to apply. So. Um, if this sounds really interesting to you, um, you can apply by sending an email to the sign mail address, which is also on the website. Um, we don't have an official form to fill in, but we just expect people to send an email with a description of their project, as complete as possible, but not like 40 pages. Um, and then once a month we get together with the artistic committee and we go through the projects and we have to select, unfortunately, because it's usually too much to, to handle. Um, so we select the ones we can support. Sometimes we ask people for more information or we invite them for a, a talk or a meeting first to see if there might be a connection. Um, and yeah, no, no, an orientation workshop is usually a very good uh, starting point because that's very open. You're able to meet other people, see what science is about. But, I can imagine from people coming from here, an orientation workshop would be a little short you know, for such a long trip. So, and then, like I said, uh, at Stein, there's also we have a project blog, which is a, a, a document of a lot of projects that have been happened in the last uh, 
I think it started two or years ago or something. So uh, yeah, just go there and see what has been done. Um, so much about the project. A little bit about a little bit about the workshops. Um, we have quite a lot of in-house workshops on Slime tools, like visa workshops, orientation workshops. We also host uh, workshops for students from different um, different universities or connections we have. Um, we also have workshops on other tools like SuperCollider, uh, Pure Data, uh, Isadora, and um, sometimes we just host the workshops. So we, we we support them in like using a mailing or um, and then we sometimes visit places like this is an example of where we do workshops usually in combination with lectures and, and concerts and um, as we are there anyways. Um, that's it for the talk, well, for the talk on workshops and projects. Um, as I'm also a, a musician, I want to show the tools I'm working with, which is the Stein tools. I couldn't do any different. Um, Frank already showed you uh, the very initial workings of, uh, of Lisa. Um, the Lisa version you saw was actually uh, the, the, the version where, in which you develop your setups. The version I'm using is, is the runtime version, so to say. Uh, it's optimized for the Intel computer, so it runs really good, and it's very stable. Um, so that's what I use in my situation because I'm not changing my setup when I'm playing anyway. Um, next to that, I just have uh, some text files where uh, it's indicated what kind of samples I can use. Maybe um, I can really shortly. I have these mini controllers. They're just out of the box, uh, nothing made by time. But um, this one I use to actually load in different samples. Um, in the setup I'm going to demonstrate now, I'm not going to do any live sampling. Um, but I'm going to use a bunch of different samples and with these buttons I can load different samples into my sample buffer uh, the one that you see right there with all the sound in there um, Like I was mentioned before uh, with Michel um, I also believe that you have to keep your setup fixed to really learn to play it to know like whenever you grab the joystick how, what kind of sounds it makes, makes and how it reacts. Um, so I don't really change a lot, I just add some, some things every now and then. Uh, the only thing I really change is the samples I'm loading. So hence this, uh, this list here because, well, at a certain moment I also remember them, but it's just something to have handy. Um, Yeah, there's, there's not so much you can see in this setup, but of course you see the samples in here. You can see me switching samples every now and then. Um, also, if I move my joystick, you see that I'm scratching through a part of the buffer. You can also see if I rotate my joystick that the color part of the, of the sample is getting smaller and bigger. So. I can specify the part of the buffer that I'm playing in the loop, and if I make it really small, it sounds like. So this is one one of the processes I'm using is where I stretch through this the right part of the sound buffer, and I use the Y coordinate of the joystick to change the pitch of the sound. The material is a little bit abstract, so it's difficult to hear. But um, I think I'm just, I'll just play a bit, and then you will be able to monitor a bit of what I do. And if there's any questions later, just come up here. I'll leave it here, so you can just ask me questions. I can try to explain, maybe with the translator also involved. Um, <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
this was uh, what I wanted to show and then tell. And, uh, like I said, um, I hope you had a good idea of uh, what kind of project sign does. And um, uh, if you're interested, please come up to us or write us an email. But it would be good if you're here anyway. Just let us know so we already know the face with the name. And um, yeah, that's it. あの、<笑> They wouldn't let us, yeah. And and you get like three people on you, like now this. I'm like, every time I look at the menu and I'm trying to think, and then you're in the corner and it comes. <laughs> you read my mind. Not exactly, but uh, <laughs> they were so active during the いや、いや、これ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> I, probably nobody took it to see it's a typical dish. <laughs> 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 あの、大学に一応そういう授業があったのと、まあ、あの、終わらないことがいただいているのと、教えるっていうよりは宿題を渡されて、来週まで。こういう授業をやって。まあ、ちょっと見たいな。そうですね。明日学校なんで。そうだ